Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm looking for Rudgwick Castle. It's a beautiful, sunny morning on a Sunday. It's very quiet, there's a little bit of mist about, and I'm in West Sussex, very close to Rudgwick, which is between Horsham and Guildford. And the Guildford Road that runs from Horsham to Guildford goes through Bucks Green and there's a turning opposite the pub there that comes up to where I am now and my plan is to find Rudgwick Castle. Now people think, what? Rudgwick Castle? Is there a castle at Rudgwick? I don't think we're talking stone castles. I don't think we're necessarily talking big uh, dominant castles, I think we might be looking at a timber framed sentry post of some description set up by the Normans. If you look at an OS map, all that you see is the reference to a mot, and that's only in the later maps, not even the earlier maps, so I don't think there's a lot to see. However, there is a reason that I want to see this, and that's related to one of Philip Mercer's stories in his book Tales of Old Sussex which was published in 1834 and I want to see if I can find it. So let's go shall we? Now if I've got this right here we go, public footpath sign. I'm looking for the Downslink Railway, which is the railway that took uh, people from all the way down in Shoreham, all the way up to, I think, either Godalming or Guildford, one of the two, and it would come up to Christ Hospital and continue north. And this is it. Aha, this is fantastic. So, here is the railway line, the old railway line, which I think was, um, taken up by the Beechings uh, Act in the 60s, 1960s. It runs north and I'm going to go and see if I can find this mot. Now the thing about this mot is it's, it's probably unaccessible, it's just off a footpath in some woodland now. I don't think it was in woodland at the time but we're going to go and see if we can find it. Just up here there's a tunnel um, the footpath actually goes around the tunnel, which just looking at the OS map means, of course, that we can't actually go onto the uh, into the tunnel, which is fine. And then I take a, a sort of westerly journey to try and find this mot. Now, the, one of the reasons I'm looking for this is because it's based in my story. Um, and the story has the house set at the edge of this woodland near Rudgwick Castle. It's a story that uh, has uh, supposed to be about this lady or this woman who has her husband's head, severed head, in an earthenware jar. Now I'll just stop for a minute because I want to just climb up this bank if I can. Uh, up here. Probably not supposed to be up here, but I wanted to get up here to show you something. I don't know if you can see this, but just through here, there is a timber framed house right in the distance. And if you look over here, there is a hill and it's onto that hill I'm going. And that timber framed house might, just might, have some relevance. I think I found the tunnel entrance, so that's really exciting. It's just up here. Um, it looks like there's, uh, it's closed off, obviously you won't be able to get in. And as you can see on the grill on the top there, that's to allow bats that are roosting inside the tunnel. So I don't want to disturb the bats. Um, there is a little door. I'm just going to go and have a quick look at that. Just having a, a quick gander. I wonder if I can peer through. People have obviously been here before. I'm just talking very quietly because I don't want to disturb the the uh, the uh, bats. It's, 
this. Get a bit of a view in there. But not much. People have obviously been in and managed to get in in the past, which is a, a shame. Right. Well, fascinating to see, and actually, I'm quite pleased that it is all closed up so that um, the bats can be left on their own and people won't go in and abuse these things because you know what they like, they do. This is not a great place for filming. Aeroplanes are flying overhead all the time because we're quite close to Gatwick Airport, which is a bit of a shame. However, now, the route that I'm going to go, I'm going to leave the tunnel here and we're going to take a, a route that way. But it is this hill that I'm interested in because somewhere up there in the trees, if I can get in there, is the Mott. Is rather lovely. I'm now in the woods so I've come off the Downslink path. Um, you go up a hill and you bypass the tunnel uh, and the tunnel isn't actually terribly long because it's, it's just taking off the cap of the hill really um, and it runs that way obviously to the north and the track comes down and then goes along if you want to carry on following the Downslink which actually a lot of cyclists I've noticed in between filming have been been doing but you can carry on in a westerly direction which is what I want to do and you come onto another footpath um, quite a main footpath a lot of rhododendrons I notice here um, but more than that telling you that this is quite an ancient bit of woodland um, banks yeah banks since reading Oliver Rackham's book on wild wood and ancient woodlands and that sort of thing, it's absolutely amazing now to have that knowledge about the banks. And I often talk about this only because I'm proud to have learnt it. These old banks that delineate um, people's property, this may have been from the 1600s, um, these banks, which is relevant to me because my story takes place, or rather Philip Mercer's story and Tales of Old Sussex that I've reproduced, as it were, uh, takes place in 1655, four years after the Battle of Worcester, the last battle in the Battle of the English Civil Wars, um, and the many of them. It looks like we've got something coming up here. I don't know what they are. Then they don't look like bluebells, but perhaps they're snowdrops or something that will be coming out very soon. And then there's rhododendrons behind me. But these mossy banks here, very old. It's, it's fantastic to see them. I've taken a little tiny little pathway off the um, the main track because it's somewhere here is the Mott and the thing that I know that will mark the position of the Mott which will be fantastic is a trig point and there is one let's have a look there's a sign up there that says private so I'm not going to go any further than that tree but I am going to have a quick look down here at the trig people love a good trig don't they Ha <laughs> ha! But what have I found over there? Oh my god! I think I found the mott. There's the trig. And there, I believe, is the Norman mott. This is really exciting. I'm absolutely thrilled. Here is the mott. I'll give you an indication of size because um, I don't know how much you can really see. 
or probably disappear. It seems to have been a, some sort of ring around it. Now, maybe it's a burial mound because <laughs> it's very much like a bell burial mound. But I reckon it's, uh, it is what it says, a mot. The, the um, a ditch goes around here and if you climb up here, there is this rather lovely sweet chestnut tree on the top and it becomes the sentinel. It goes all the way around in a, in a, a circular shape, obviously. You get a better idea here of the ditch. It drops down here more, goes all the way around, around down there. And if I just come down here, I'm actually in the mot now. It's coming behind me. I mean, when I say in the mot, I mean, I'm in the ditch around the mot. Um, and it, it circulates around. Sorry about the bad camera work. Come up over here. And then there is a path, you see. It looks like there's this path, which I guess is a permitted path because people will want to come and, and just have a look at a little bit of history. And actually, if I look on the ground here, you see the path, but also, actually, this is a wash. I think these are bluebells. I think they are. Have a look. I think they're bluebells. And this whole area is going to be a wash of bluebells, which also tells you it's quite old. One mot over there would have had a timber framed tower on it. One 1930s triangular survey station for the Ordnance Survey maps here. Highest point, lots of trees. View has obviously gone now, but it would have been cleared. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to look out for the video, which has me telling the story of the woman who had the man, um, the woman whose husband's severed head is in a stone jar. That will be coming very shortly, worth um, looking at. But it's interesting to have found Rudgwick Castle. I'm guessing not a lot of people know it's here. Some people do, obviously, and it's accessible. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and um, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And of course you can become a patron and help me get out and about and explore more interesting places like this. So why not um, sign up at the baldexplorer.com and make a donation or become a re regular contributor. That would be great. Till next time, thanks so much. Bye for now.